This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. The requirements for System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2012 R2 are going to be we need at least 4 gigs of memory. So if we're installing it on a virtual machine and we're using dynamic memory, then we need to configure the startup memory and the minimum memory at 4 gigs. For the operating system we're installing it on, it can be Windows Server 2012 or above, so it could also be Windows Server 2012 R2. It must be a member of an Active Directory domain. The server name can't exist or exceed more than 15 characters. And there's a database portion to Virtual Machine Manager that's very important. And we can use either SQL Server 2008 R2 with Service Pack 2 or above, so we can also use SQL Server 2012. Now as far as the placement of our management server, so where we're installing Virtual Machine Manager at, we can do it on a standalone host. That's a physical server. We could do it on a virtual machine. We can also make it highly available and install it to a failover cluster, and we'll see how to do that in a bit. Now normally we wouldn't want to install it on a virtual machine that's being managed by Virtual Machine Manager. So probably installing Hyper-V and then installing Virtual Machine Manager as a virtual machine on Hyper-V, and then telling Virtual Machine Manager to manage that host that it's installed on, or that the virtual machine is running on. Now, it is possible to do that, but then if you have a problem with that particular host, or it loses network connectivity, or something like that, then we can't get to Virtual Machine Manager to correct the virtual machine. So certainly in a production environment, we want to keep Virtual Machine Manager separate from the Hyper-V host that it's managing. So that might mean we have a separate cluster for Virtual Machine Manager, or we have a separate physical server for Virtual Machine Manager to run on. That way, if there's a problem with our hosts, we can still try to fix that or fix the Virtual Machines on it with Virtual Machine Manager because we can still get to Virtual Machine Manager because it's completely separate. Now for the database portion, the SQL Server can be installed locally on the same machine that Virtual Machine Manager is installed on, or it can be a remote SQL Server. I'm on a domain controller, and let's create an account in Active Directory that we're going to use for Virtual Machine Manager to administer the hosts. So I'm going to go to Tools, Active Directory, Users and Computers, and I've got an OU called Service Accounts that I'm going to use for all my different service accounts. Let's go to New user and I'm gonna call this one VMM service and I'll type in my username here VMM service click next type in my password for this account and I'm gonna set password never expires because I don't want it to expire on me and then have my virtual machine manager not work so I'll go ahead and click next and finish I'm still on a domain controller and we're going to create a container in Active Directory for distributed key management. So our virtual machine manager servers are going to encrypt certain data and they're going to use a key to do that. With distributed key management in Active Directory, we can back up that key in Active Directory in case we have some kind of problem with our virtual machine manager server, we can kind of restore that encrypted data. And we're going to use ADSI edit to create this container, so I'm just going to click on the start button here. Type in ADSI edit, hit enter, and let's right click, connect to, we want to connect to the default naming context, click OK, let's go ahead and expand it out, and we can create this container wherever we'd like in Active Directory, I'm just going to create it in the root of my domain here, so I'm going to right click, new object, select container, click next. Let's give it a value here. I'm going to call it VMM DKM. So I'll go ahead and click Next and Finish. Now let's right click on it, go to Properties, go to the Security tab, and let's go down to Advanced. And I'm going to highlight Domain Admins, click Edit, and change this to this object in all descendant objects. Click OK. And let's go ahead and add, let's add our VMM service account. Give it full control and this object and all descendant objects. 
and click OK. Let's go back to Attribute Editor. We can see here Distinguish Name. This is what we're going to need to know when we go through the installation. This is how it determines where uh, the container is in Active Directory with the Distinguish Name. So I can view this and copy it. We'll need to know this again for our installation of Virtual Machine Manager. Okay, so I'm on the server that's going to be our Virtual Machine Manager server, PHX VMM01. The first thing we need to do is give that a VMM service account that we created earlier permissions on this server. So I'm going to right click on my start button, open computer management, and we just need to make it a local administrator. So I'll expand local users and groups, highlight groups, double click on administrators, and let's add our VMM service account. Click OK. The next thing we're going to need to do is give the VMM service account permissions on our SQL server. So I'm going to connect to my SQL server. Let me just open up my SQL server management studio. There it is. Let's see if I scroll. There it is. SQL server management studio. And I just happen to have SQL server also installed on this machine. So I'll go ahead and connect to it. If I didn't, I would just connect to it just like I would any other SQL Server. See, I don't currently have any databases on it. We're actually going to create the database during the Virtual Machine Manager installation. Now, we could create it now if we'd like. Give it a name, put the database files exactly where we want to on the specific drives. That's probably what we're going to do. And then, as we'll see during the installation, we can select Existing Database and use an existing database that we created, basically a blank database. And if we do that, we're going to want to make the VMM service the owner of that database. But, but in this example, I'm just going to create the database during the installation. We do need to go to Security, Logins. Let's right-click on our Logins. Go to New Login. And we need to do this regardless of whether we uh, create the database ourselves or create it during the installation. So let's go ahead and add our VMM service account. Let me just change my location to the domain here. There it is. Now let's expand this out. Let's go over to server roles. We need to make it DB creator if we're going to create the database during the installation of Virtual Machine Manager. And then regardless of whether we create it ourselves or during the installation, we need to make it process admin and security admin. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Great, and now our VMM service account has the appropriate permissions it needs to install uh, Virtual Machine Manager and create the database. Before we install Virtual Machine Manager on our Virtual Machine Manager server here, always a good idea to run Windows Update. Let's go ahead and get the latest updates. I'm going to click on Check for Updates. And I may want to configure my updates, go to Change Settings. I've got Never Check for Updates, uh, depending on our scenario. That's what we want to select here. Most of the time, we don't want to install updates automatically because then our server could reboot, possibly when we don't want it to reboot. So let's go ahead and check for updates. Okay, I've got one. I'll go ahead and install it. Okay, my server is now up to date. So next, we need to install a few prerequisites for Virtual Machine Manager. So the first one is going to be the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit for Windows 8.1. So I'll go ahead and download that. And I'll just go ahead and run it. Select my installation path. I may want to change it. If I do, I can just click Browse. If I'm downloading it and installing it on multiple Virtual Machine Manager servers, I could also download it uh, into a separate location here and then install it from that download path. I'm just going to go ahead and install it, though. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Click Next again to the Customer Experience Program. Accept the terms. And we actually just need the deployment tools in the Windows pre-installation environment. So we don't need this, these other options for Virtual Machine Manager. So once I've got those two selected, I'll go ahead and click Install. OK, that installation's complete. The next thing we're going to need to install if we're using SQL Server 2012, is the SQL Server native client and also the command line utilities. Now, I've already got SQL Server uh, installed on this particular server. If we don't, if we're using a separate SQL Server, 
then we'll need to install that native client. So to do it, we just expand install instructions and scroll down to the SQL Server 2012 native client. We want to install the x64 package. Again, I've already got that installed. Next, we need the command line utilities. So I'll just scroll down some more to the Microsoft SQL Server 2012 command line utilities. Download the x64 package. And I'll just go ahead and save it to my desktop. And let's go to our desktop and I'll go ahead and double click on it and run it. So it's a pretty quick installation. Just accept the terms, click next and install. And finish. Great. So now our server is ready for our virtual machine manager installation. Now let's go ahead and install System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2012 R2. I've gone ahead and downloaded the installer to my C drive. Here it is. I'll just double click on setup and click on install and I'll check VMM management server it'll automatically check VMM console click next enter in our name organization product key if we don't enter in our product key it'll go into evaluation mode so go ahead and click next and check the box to agree to the terms click next specify if you want to be part of the customer experience improvement program click next Specify if you want to get your System Center Virtual Machine Manager updates through Microsoft Update. I'll go ahead and turn that on. Click Next. And specify the installation location. I'm going to put it on my C drive in the default location. We may want to put it on another drive. So I'll go ahead and click Next. It's going to check for prerequisites. If we had any problems, it would let us know. We'd go ahead and fix those. And then come back to the installation. Specify our SQL Server name. MySQL server is phxvmm01. If we're using something different than the default port, then we specify that port number here. I'm going to use the following credentials. I'm going to use my VMM service account that we created. Now I'll go ahead and type in the password. Specify the instance name. And we're going to use a new database here. Uh, so that means it's going to create the database in SQL Server. If we already created the database, then we'd specify existing database and select the existing database that we want to use. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And we're going to enter in our Virtual Machine Manager account, our VMM service account that we created earlier. And I'll type in the password for distributed key management. We're going to store our keys in Active Directory, and we're going to go back and get that distinguished name of the container we created earlier in Active Directory. So here it is. I'll go ahead and copy it. Let's go back to our installation. And I'll go ahead and paste it in. Click Next. Specify if we want to use different ports than the default. Normally, we're going to use the default ports. So I'll go ahead and click Next. We can create a new library share now or use an existing one. I'm actually going to use something different than the default. The default puts it on the C drive, and our library can get pretty big, so we're probably going to want to put it on a different drive than the C drive. So I've got an E drive that I'm going to use for my library. So I'm just going to create a new folder here. And I'm going to use that. So let's go ahead and go to Select, this PC my E drive and there it is. So I want to use that folder for my library. Click Next. Gives us a summary here and install. And the installation is complete.